Hello everyone, this is Rob Peterson. I'm the engineer here at Van Compass. And I wanted to show you a little bit about the R&D uh, phase of what goes into developing lift kits here. And what we kind of strive to do and focus on when we're developing a lift kit so that everything is done correctly. So we have a 2020 all-wheel drive transit here on the rack. We're in the development phase. And just one, a couple days I wanted to point out some of the hurdles that we encounter. Um, and stuff like this is, you know, there's a lot of cheaper lifts on the market that'll like put a strut spacer on top of the coil and lift the vehicle that way so that there's like a two inch or three inch spacer on top of the coil and it cranks this control arm down. And you can see this is a stock van. This doesn't have a lift. This is just stock at full droop. And you can see how like the ball joint is already you know, almost a maximum alignment. Look at the look at the tie rod on it. When it said full droop, but with the steering turn, you know, it's maxed, it's bound up. And then this rear control arm bushing on the Ford Transits. This is another issue that doesn't get addressed by some of the cheaper lifts. You know, this is at this is maxed out already without the lift kit installed. So this is just factory. Everything on this van is stock. We're just at full droop and full lock. So when we do our lift kits for the Transit, we drop the subframe down at the same time as putting a spacer on top of the coil. That way all our control arm angles are the same as factory. These wear items like the ball joint, the tie rod end, the control arm bushings, they're still at the factory angles that they were stock. They don't, they don't see more angle out of them. So that's just something to think about. A new hurdle is that this, these all those drive transits present is, well now we have front axle shafts too. So similar, similar deal, right? Like these axle shafts only have so much movement in them. They only have so much angle they can do before they can get, before they get bound up and then they're gonna start grenading themselves pretty quickly. You know, no matter what conditions you're in, if you're driving down the road at 70 miles an hour, these are spinning at 70 miles an hour. So don't think that like, oh, it's not that bad. It, it, it's spinning, there's a lot of load happening here and there's a lot of wear happening in these joints. So we have the boots torn apart right now and we're just gonna kinda show you what happens when you lift this, like in this vehicle in particular, if you do a lift like we were talking, you just put a coil spring spacer or space it down up at the top without addressing anything else, the kind of issues you're gonna run into. So we're at stock droop right now and it's full drive passenger steering lock. So we're gonna go ahead and space it down. So right now this spins freely, no problem. Now if we space it down, so we'll bring it down as if we were, just imagine we were lifting it up at the top, but no matter how you lifted it, if you did it in this fashion where you're gonna overextend, give it more droop, this is the scenario you're gonna encounter. So you can see the wear line of where it was stock. You can see it right here. So we're gonna space it down, oh, I don't know, let's try half an inch here, see how we're doing. All right, still feels about the same. Go a little more, probably right about three quarter, I need a tape out for you, but it's getting tighter. And you're just gonna have to take my word on this, but you're welcome to try it yourself on your 2020 Transit, if you go get one. That's getting tighter. So that's right about one inch. Now it's got tight spots in it. So I have to like, you can feel it spin smooth, gets tight, spin smooth, gets tight. That's this joint binding. You can see that. So you might think, oh, well, I'm never gonna be at full droop and full steering lock. Well, you probably are. Like these vans don't have a lot of suspension travel. And when, you know, just you're off camber slightly, you're off on a dirt road and you, you're turning to avoid a rock, like this is gonna be the scenario. Now don't forget also, when this is straight too, you're still at way max alignment that this joint can handle. So this is just something we think about when we're developing lift kits. So we're gonna address this when we go to develop our lift kit for this van. Um, another hurdle besides this is, so that a solution could potentially be, well, why don't we just drop the front diff down too? Well, that would be a great fix, and that's something that, you know, would make it easier. The problem is the front drive shaft on this van is super short. And I mean really short. It's hard to see because it's tucked up in there. But this is the front drive shaft. It has a tiny bit of plunge to it. 
and you can see the length on this. This is probably about half the length of the Sprinter front drive shaft. And the Sprinter front on the Sprinters, we're able to drop the diff pretty easily because the drive shaft is twice as long and it doesn't have an issue. It has plenty of misalignment to be able to do it. But on this Ford van, even stock, it's got angle on it. You can see that well, I, as I have it pushed back in the yoke, we already have a misalignment here in the joint and a misalignment back here. So if we were to try to drop this down, I can't even get it out because there's barely any plunge. But you can see just by doing that, look how bound the front drive shaft is. I've only pulled this down maybe three quarters of an inch, maybe. And we're already going to start seeing a good amount of angle. So if we were to drop the subframe and drop the diff at the same time, now we're having the, instead of putting the wear on the front CV shafts, we're putting a lot of wear on this front drive shaft. And because of its short length, that doesn't look like that's going to be a great solution either. Not to mention, it is an absolute bear to drop this diff down. You have to pull the exhaust off, you got to get the diff bolts are way tucked up in here. There's all sorts of other issues we're going to encounter if we do that. So we're going to work through this. We'll have a solution for you guys real soon. And it should be a really nice solution that I think everyone's going to be really happy with. And be an easy install and you know, address all these issues so that when you put the lift kit on the van, you can get the big tires on there. You won't have accelerated wear issues that a lot of cheaper lift kits uh, induce because they don't address you know, the fact that these factory control arm, these factory suspension and steering bushings, they have limits. And when you overextend them, that's when wear starts to happen, you get clunks, and that's what lift kits get a bad reputation because of that. But not here at Van Compass, we try to focus and make sure that when you buy stuff from us, you're done one time. Like we don't hear from you again because you're happy. So stay tuned, we'll keep you updated when we have uh, a nice solution for these Really cool 2020 all-wheel drive transits.